Thank you for the introduction and for everyone to be here. So uh, my name is Jessica Rosati. I'm a data scientist at DRCV, and I will give a talk about um, how to, to build a user profile in the fashion domain, keeping it up to date, and use it for personalized recommendation. Uh, first of all, just a few words about the amazing company where I'm working. Uh, it's called DRCV, and it's the leader in fashion personalization, operating both in the uh, UK, Australia, and in the US market. Um, it's based on a business-to-business -business paradigm, which means that we um, empower retailers to give each customer their own tailored experience. And currently, we are providing uh, online and mobile solution, and we are moving towards in-store solutions. This is the list of the partners we are currently working with. Um, the core of the service provided by Dressipi to the retailer's customers is a recommender system. Uh, which are software tools and technique providing suggestion for items that um, should be that are likely to be of interest for the user. Um, recommender system have been introduced in the last decades to face the information overload issue, that is the over -bog boggling amount, of, um, the mind boggling amount of information available on the web, uh, which risks to overwhelm user experience while retrieving content of interest. Uh, and um, to face this, um, this issue, the um, recommender system has been proposed, and now we distinguish between uh, different uh, approaches according to the kind of information that they exploit. So for example, we have collaborative approach. If we exploit the information and the purchases of a community of users and try to identify um, the neighbors, so similar user to, to you. Um, Content-based approach, if we try to exploit the characteristic of each um, item to recommend it. Knowledge-based approaches and um, sort of hybrid system where we combine previous ones. Um, nowadays, um, an application designer who wish to add the recommender system to her application has a large variety of algorithms at her disposal and must uh, choose the most suitable for her goals. This selection is based on experiment and one or more evaluation metric that provide a ranking of the candidate algorithm. Um, we distinguish between two experimental settings, offline experiments, which are the easiest to conduct, as they do not ask for real user, for, for actual user, but they are based on historical data, and online experiments, where uh, uh, the system is used by a pool of real user uh, typically unaware of the, um, of the experiment itself. At Recipe, for example, we always conduct A-B test, that is a control experiment where two versions of the same recommender of the same variable are compared. So we have uh, a control version and um, a variation version. So we give to users at random uh, recommendation from the control group and from the variation, and we try to figure out which performs better in accordance to um, a conversion rate. Um, I mentioned some metrics to evaluate the performances of um, our recommender system. And uh, accuracy um, is uh, by far the most known uh, uh, matrix for, the, for this evaluation. It's an estimate of how well the recommendation engine predicts user opinion on items, for example, the rating of a movie, or the probability of usage of a purchase. Uh, and whenever we are interested in the fact that the user will buy, select uh, an item or not, we talk about uh, implicit feedback. And the evaluation is carried out uh, building uh, the so-called contingency matrix, uh, where we compare what our system is recommending, is suggesting, uh, versus uh, the um, actual user choices. So for example, we will define uh, a true positive as uh, a hit for our system that is an item that is actually recommended by the system and at the same time is selected is both by the user. And according to these metrics, we can define several uh, metrics such as the precision, the recall, or rank sensitive metrics, since basically what we usually suggest to the user is a, is a ranking of recommendation, a ranking of garments, um, typically as vertical or horizontal list, imposing a certain natural order. So we want to give more value to an, a correct item that appears in the first position of the list rather than uh, in the, at the bottom of the list itself. 
Um, however, researchers realized that um, accuracy is not enough for evaluate the performance of a recommender. Uh, in fact, uh, the most accurate recommendation for a user are often too similar to each other, and they risk to become redundant for the user. Let's just think about the um, YouTube recommendation list, which used to be really more dull compared to current ones. Or think about the list of 10 black garments that are displayed to the user at the same time. Or uh, as another extreme, uh, a list of just floral garments, since maybe they've been very popular for users in the last week. So it is worth to consider additional metrics in the evaluation, such as the novelty and diversity, which is the degree of diversification in the list that is provided to each user. And that has been proven to, um, to reduce the overfitting issue, and at the same time to improve the quality of user experience with the system. Uh, so far, uh, um, however, diversity based um, on only one attribute, like for example, a product category in e-commerce, uh, has been considered. Uh, and improvements can come up by moving the items in a multi-dimensional space, uh, where each dimension is uh, a different attribute or a feature. Um, however, um, um, even if we are able to identify a set of attributes to focus on, that is attributes that drive user decision making, we should still ask if it's true that each user needs diversity for every single attribute, and what is the right level of diversity for each attribute. Since maybe looking at the list of black garments that we showed before, some of you may have thought that there is actually nothing wrong with that list, so if I want a list of black garments, why do you want to recommend me I don't know, some uh, pink one, I don't know. Uh, so um, actually there is absolutely nothing wrong, so um, the customer opinion matters, especially for a company like the recipe that aims at providing the best shopping experience to each customer. So um, it's true that it's, it's good moving towards a multidimensional space where we have more attributes to take into consideration, but we should be able to model user attitude towards each attribute. And this is the, these are the kind of answers that we, I kind to, to answer uh, with my research team at Polytechnic University of Bari before joining uh, this company. So we were moving from the assumption that uh, an, an analysis of user behavior can, uh, can uncover uh, a more conservative attitude of the user with respect to some attribute and some uh, needs to explore different uh, um, values of other attributes. And this is what we found out with uh, our analysis in uh, book and movie domain. Um, I will try to explain briefly the approach that we use for um, our, um, for the one that we call an adaptive multi-attribute diversification approach, where adaptive means uh, tailored to each user. So it's quite common strategy in uh, recommender system field to have a baseline that generate uh, uh, a list of recommendation and the re-ranking strategy that re-ranks the list according to some objective function. In our case, we choose as the objective function uh, uh, one that was able to deal with the trade-off between uh, accuracy, which is the left-hand side, and diversity, the right-hand side. That is, um, at each step, uh, we selected as the new item uh, J to add to, to the list, the one that was able to maximize uh, a, the weighted mean of accuracy and the distance with the items already in the list. And we uh, computed the similarity of the new item i with the items already in the list, sim ij, uh, taking into account the diversifying attitude of each user with respect to the different feature that characterize the, the item. Um, in particular, uh, we selected some attribute of interest, which, for example, in the, in the movie domain were the, the topic, uh, the, the actor, and the director of the movie. And for each attribute, we uh, cluster users into um, four groups. We call them quadrants. Um, by looking at their past interaction with the system, that is, we exploited, we cluster users according to the profile length, so how many uh, purchases they have and a sort of entropy measure uh, to reflect the, um, an, an exploratory behavior of the users versus a conservative one. So the fact that the user, uh, user choices are 
distributed across the several values that an attribute can assume, or are just focused on a few values or just maybe on a single value for an attribute. Um, we embed this, we, we then introduce a weighting schema to let user attitude towards diversification to stand out. Um, and we embed this modeling into the objective function that I showed before. Um, and we, in, in such a way that we could foster or limit the diversity of the recommendation list according to the past behavior of each user. And the main conclusion of our approach uh, were that uh, an unpersonalized approach that recommends that use the same strategy for each user actually re um, improves the diversity, but only at the, um, at the cost of accuracy in accordance with the trade-off, the well-known trade-off of accuracy and diversity. On the contrary, an adaptive approach, like the one that we propose, was able to foster the diversity only for a subset of the user, but which were the users that were really interested in a diversified list, uh, users in the fourth quadrant, which have a, a long profile history and a big value of entropy, so they want to explore more. Uh, and um, we had not just an improvement in diversity, but also no, mm, collateral effects on other metrics, uh, which were important in, uh, in the evaluation. And um, this pretty easy approach that I just, I just described has been applied to uh, movie and books domains, uh, where user preferences tend to, to last long. But actually, this is not true in the fashion domain where I'm currently working, um, whose main issue is the so-called new item problem. That is the fact that uh, our items have a, a very short lifetime. Most of the garments we work with uh, um, are available to buy only for a couple of months. Uh, new garments arrive quite mm, very frequently, and this means that they are uh, excluded in every kind of collaborative system, since we have no information, no feedback on them. Uh, and moreover, uh, trends start um, quick, um, suddenly and finish as easily, and they have a very big influence on uh, user decision making. So um, currently at Drastic, we, we are trying to optimize our recommendation algorithm in terms of uh, accuracy and diversity, so more than one evaluation metrics. But uh, while trying to, to model user behavior, uh, we, are, we should ask if the diversity in buying history is actually due to a personal attitude of the user, or it's just a consequence of uh, the fact that new trends are coming in quick uh, um, suggestion, sorry. Um, and uh, our garments now are characterized by many, many attributes, so it's quite challenging to identify uh, which are the attributes that drive user choices in, uh, in the fashion domain, so how to define discriminated attributes for, for each user. Another question that is absolutely an open question so far uh, is that um, concern outfits, since we are not recommending just single garments, but also outfits. And the concept of uh, diversity in an uh, outfit is, is um, so we are, we are trying to figure out if we need diversity in an outfit and how we can achieve that. Um, and finally, we are, um, we are uh, currently working on uh, menswear, so we will uh, soon provide a recommendation for men in the fashion domain. And we are, um, we are wondering about the need of uh, gender-specific strategies, and uh, we are open to new discoveries. Thank you.